Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first practice session for the or first qualifying session for the NNSCRA Honeydew Donuts 250K. The first truck on track is going to be the 85 Toyota, driven by Roger Ray. Quick note. This is the first of two 15-minute qualifying sessions. This is Group 1. If you do not see yourself here in Group 1, you are in Group 2. These sessions are as follows. The person with the fastest lap time between the two sessions will get the pole for the main race and will be locked into the event, leaving us with two 27-truck heats. which then the top 20 from both of those races will move on to the main race. And then the remaining 14 trucks will do one race by themselves where the winner will start last and make the main. So Roger Ray is the first truck on track behind her. I mean him, sorry. Sorry, Roger. <coughs> Excuse me as well. I am under the weather dealing with a cold. Oops. Hello. Paused it. Might be. Was shoving some stuff off the, the uh, keypad. Jackson King and the 38 Donut King Ram. Second on track. Daniel Voiles we see here in the 82. I believe that is a dot Ford. That's a Ford there. 48 of Nathan Ormond. 16 of Martin Wild. 4 of Philip Goldberg. We've got 20 of Ty Dent. The 8 of Alexander Rowe. 99 of Levi McIntyre, 88 of Tony Green, 14 of Eli Bright, as Ray's the first one around the track. Key things to note here with this package being ran, it's a high drag package with uh, <coughs> moderate grip <coughs> improvements. So we're going to see a lot of draft packed style racing for this uh, road course, as you can see, Johnny Gardner easily sucking up to the back of Roger Ray 25 driven by Chase Gomes 33 Corey Riggs 75 is Jesse Turner 03 is Charles Sanford Jonathan Carter in the 68 Carter Friesen in the 97 Seth Cole your Mr. Prez is in the 29 truck we've got Simon Bloomfield in the 10 Patrick Sick I hope I'm saying that right. Patrick Sick is in the 44. Jacob Dunn in the 62. Dylan Young in the 2. Gatlin Downey in the 72. Sebastian Kukulon in the 54. As you can see, there's a pretty decent difference in the draft. Peter Onjak is in the 92. Fitzwater Sr., in the 59, <clears throat> Levi McIntyre, we went over him. Edwin Mendez is in the 22. As we'll see, draft times will start to appear. You really want to be in the draft, and you really want to be at the right distance for your hot lap in order to get a very good time. I believe we've gone through the whole field. And it appears we have. So right now the 16 of Martin Wild is the fastest. These trucks right here were in draft. We'll see if one of them gets a good time here. That's going to hurt Roger there peeking out at the last second. As Mendez begins his first lap. But you really want to be in fourth gear when you're doing these draft laps. So as we know right now Martin Wild is the fastest. In front of him is Nathan Ormond, as now Charles Sanford has jumped to the top of the board. In this group with him is Jonathan Carter, who's second, and Jesse Turner, who's 15th. Now, I just want to make it clear, the lap times besides the top time do not matter as far as starting position goes. The drivers who finish top 20 in their heat races will be... Uh, Qualifying again for second to 41st in the main race. As Wild has dropped, jumped straight back up to the top. 
Right behind him is the 48 of Nathan Ormond, who drives right next to him. So these guys, yeah, these guys are binging off of this pack here. You can see pretty even side by side by yourself. Once you get to the corner, the lower line gives you the preferred angle. But as we'll see, drag is, draft is very important here. So we'll go on board a lap with Martin Wilde here. Just want you to watch his speedometer creep up really fast in the distance of the trucks in front of him. Draft is so important here. This could be another fast lap. And it is not a fast lap, but it is for the 48 of Nathan Ormond. See, now that there's three trucks in front, Wild doesn't exactly close up. So right here, this should allow him to catch. Just look at how much speed these trucks lose when they're out of the draft. Drag really kicks in. And just like that, that little side-by-side -side allowed Martin to catch right up. Ty Dent has moved to the top of the board <clears throat> and this mega pack here next to him in the 72 is Gatlin Downing you've got Dylan Young Jacob Dunn and Philip Goldberg also up here in this pack <clears throat> Downing is second on the board Sanford back up the third now 75 of Turner is up the fourth, and Dylan Young was third. He's now fifth. This is on 1X tire wear, but you really want to get those fast laps pretty early. There is still some fall off. <clears throat> so 16, Martin Wilde jumps back to the top spot. The first lap time in the 114s we're going to see here. <clears throat> Pardon me. See, out of this group, nobody beats the 16 of Wild. So Marin seems to have a pretty good truck under that hood. You see, yeah, he caught up to Bloomfield and Sick in the 44. Oh, he goes kind of wide into the corner here. That's going to botch this lap time. <coughs> Having as many trucks as you can and ri just riding behind in the draft is key. Any split second you peek out, you lose a lot of speed right away. <coughs> So see right here, watch as Ormond and Bloomfield move side by side. Six going to make a move three wide almost. It's just going to fall in line. But watch how much speed difference the draft is compared to Ormond here. <coughs> Being by himself. He's getting a little side draft from the looks of it. As the 68 has set a fast time. Who is that? That is Jonathan Carter, and he drives in front of Charles Sanford. They've got a bunch of other trucks back here as well. They've got Turner, Gomes, Corey Riggs is at the back of this pack. <clears throat> Excuse me. Up here we see the 85 of Roger Ray, who was the first truck on the track for this session. Oh, and he's going to peek out a line, and that is very bad. <clears throat> See, he doesn't lose a lot of distance, but that's still hurtful. So we've still only got two trucks. <clears throat> excuse me, in the 114s. They're three wide behind Carter. So we're showing that track position will be pretty key, even with pit stops in this race. It is going to be very difficult to make moves in the middle of the field. As we look through these 28 trucks, you can see some drivers have not found draft, and one of them is the 97 of Carter Friesen, who has not been able to get a good lap time down. <coughs> he, in fact, leads this pack right here. 
<clears throat> he just ran his fastest lap, and he's on his sixth one. Behind him, we've got Seth Cole, Daniel Voiles, and Jackson King. The Voiles and Cole both ran their fastest laps last time by, but they are only 22nd and 23rd. So now they were going to draft by with Seth in the front, but now that's not happening. Now they're going to go three wide there. That's going to be Jackson King on the inside. You actually can see the bottom still has to hold up <coughs> a good bit. Voiles is actually in fourth gear, as is Seth Cole and Friesen. <coughs> that is pretty pivotal for a fast lap time, as Levi McIntyre has run a 114.613. Fitzwater Sr. is second on the board. Tony Green up to fourth on the board. Three new drivers in the 114 lap time bracket. Voiles is going to jump down the line. So will King. <coughs> Friesen will jump up to a 115.552. Cole a 5.72, Voiles a 4.33, and King a 3.94. But let's find McIntyre. <clears throat> and you can see they're all pretty spaced right here. McIntyre, Fitzwater, and Green, who ran those fast laps last time. They're still trying to catch up. They could run fast laps this time by. That's not the case for McIntyre or, or Green or Fitzwater. But they've been running behind Onjak, Kukulon, and Rowe are also all of every part near the bottom. We've got a total of five trucks under a 115 lap time. We've got just over three minutes remaining. McIntyre still the top truck. After a couple minutes now, McIntyre ran that on his seventh lap, or sixth lap, I'm sorry. He just finished the seventh. So he ran that on his sixth lap, but it's really key. You need... It seems you need at least two to three trucks in front of you at a good distance. <coughs> two to three trucks behind you, a good distance, a good distance behind you. And you want to be in fourth gear, <coughs> it seems. Because in third gear it is good, you get a lot of a build up, but when you're in fourth gear, right when you get up to the 180s in third gear, you're going to start slowing down because you're at such a high RPM. In fourth gear that doesn't happen. As who was that? I think that was um, Peter Onjak going down pit road. I see drivers see you're still running slow lap time. Some drivers are actually starting to pit. This is the other mega group we've got going on with Chase Gomes, Sanford, Corey Riggs, Turner, and Carter. Remember, the only place here that matters is first. Two minutes left. McIntyre is con is not confirmed to be the pole sitter yet because we still have another session to run. Uh, but right now he's looking pretty good. Sanford's making a move on Riggs. This is also very good practice for the race. Now remember, 42 of the 55 drivers will make the event. The 13 who don't make it, they're just SOL. Still only five drivers under a 115. We're at the point now where it would be impossible to complete or start another lap. Everyone starting their lap right now is still good to go, but once we get down to the wire, it's gonna get close. It looks like Mendez had pit and he had stayed on pit road. So McIntyre is looking like right now to be our guy. Let's go to the cockpit camera. Let's see how this looks from the inside of his truck. You can see this truck is in fourth gear. Notice the RPMs are below 8,000. These trucks get most of their horsepower right at 8,000. When you're in third gear at the speed, you're at closer to 9,000. There's less horsepower, more fuel use. See, having the lift there slows you down tremendously. I don't know why I did the camera that way. So we're going to get to the start-finish line. And you can see we've got 
standby mode here. So right here, we're going to control N. We're gonna escape and we're gonna just sit here. So as you can see, there's all your lap times. There are still drivers who have 50 seconds to finish their laps. But right now, looking like McIntyre, our top of the board. We'll see if anyone jumps up or down. But so Wild, Green, Carter, Fitzwater, and McIntyre seem to have pretty fast trucks all in the 114 bracket. We've got a total of 11 trucks under a 115.1. 17 under a 115.2. And only three trucks, Friesen, Cole, and Kukulon, who are above a 115.5. Now remember, this is pretty draft influenced right here. This is all about draft. There is some skill involved, obviously, because you can't run a fast lap time on worn tires. Right there, session is complete. And with that, I will see you for session two. Welcome back, we're getting ready for session number two. The temperature has dropped about nine degrees and the wind has also decreased. So we could see faster times here in this session, but it still depends on the draft. These drivers get first truck out. It's gonna be the 63 driven by Colt Hudson. Nine degree difference. Now it's not cloudy. It was clear in the first session. It was clear in the second session. Here, here now, Manuel Hartnett in the 83 Ram. If it was cloudy, then these guys would have a clear advantage due to the cloud coverage. However, it is still clear. Jay Jefferson in the 31 out on track. Derek Hamill in the 47. We've got Ryan Brommer and Joe in. Damn, Jose Mills and Ryan Brommer are on track here together. So these guys are already lining up to be draft partners. Cole Baker in the 06. Probably one of the hottest schemes for the Chevy camp. Out on track. Andrew Rich in the 23, another hot Chevy truck. Michael Norman is coming out on the track in the famous 3. Though it is not the 3 he's probably used to driving as far as the styling goes on that number. William Brock, Ace Rogers out on the racetrack. Chris Wheeler, Joshua Sakuli, Trey Wright, Sam at Austin, Anthony Lopez, Brandon Duncan, RJ Bishop, Tyler Markle, Colt Hudson driving by there, James Ellison coming out on the track. There are still more trucks coming out there. Sane Beckett in the 55. Kaz McKella in the 11. We've got Bryce Legere. Le Legere. Legere. I'm guessing it's Legere. I don't know how else to say that. Bryce Legere. John Greed in the 71. Already getting drafted. Like, look, they're already up to speed. Look at the speed difference there. There's an outlet. Diego Yepes coming out on the racetrack. Jonathan Zorlin coming out. There is one more truck on pit road, and that is the 98 of Jake Rogers, so we will see him out soon. Right now, Brock and Ace Rogers starting their lap. Ace already ran one lap. We're going to wait a little while longer until we bring up the ticker. You can see by yourself, though, it's pretty even between these two trucks. Go to helicopter camera. Brock was unable to complete the pass on Ace on the left-handers. As we come to the right-handers now, they are both fresh rubber right now, flat out, but you can see this corner is so long. And the way you can apex it, it just allows Ace to clear. So this is probably going to help Brock because right here he's going to get the draft. Now remember, the fast time by McIntyre was a 114.613. That is the lap time to beat to get the pole. And... Get the first pit stall and lock yourself into the main. Now the 250K is a, I think it's 42 lap event. It's 41 or 42. 
It will be 1x. It'll most likely be only one pit stop. Depending on how much fuel they use in third gear. Alright, everyone should be good to go here. But right now, the fast lap is a 114.594 by the 17 of Ryan Brommer. And you can just see there's so many trucks right here. So right off the bat, McIntyre's lap time has been eradicated. And like I said, the temperature drop worked in the favor of group two. In fact, we've got six drivers in the 114s. So that nine degree drop really worked out. It's there four wide in front of Brommer. As now the 86 of Jose Mills goes to the top with the 114.591. They made that four wide work. And now Brommer's going to make it maybe three wide. And you can see the temperature drop two things have happened the trucks are getting into fourth gear easier and with that we're getting higher speeds and more passing but a nine degree drop is all it took and hey it's Massachusetts it's the winter it's a clear day temperature drop uh, lower as we can probably understand the pattern here on this day is that it's one of those days where the temperature's warm in the morning and it drops as the day goes on <coughs> pardon me so Mills and Hartnett are going to clear this group but I mean they're not going anywhere you still got Hamill, Jefferson and Brommer Not seeing any fast times there. There are still only nine trucks under a 115. And only Mills and Brommer have gotten under a 14.6. So we look around here. You see St. Beckett, last truck by himself. There's a couple other guys still very high above a 115. Bryce Legere, John Greed, and McKella all ran 115s last lap by. They are still in third gear, though, as is Rich and Cole Baker. Yep, as we can see, running by himself. Same for Michael Norman. Brock, Sorlin, and Ace Rogers are likely to catch those drivers at some point. Packs of five seem to be pretty pretty key as the lucky number of what kind of pack you want to be drafting in wheelers to coolie here by themselves Jake Rogers Trey Wright Sam and Austin Colt Hudson fourth on the board this is his group you've got 14th Lopez fifth James Ellison 8th is Duncan, 7th Markle, and ninth is Bishop. So a lot of top 10 trucks right up here, except for Anthony Lopez. That's actually 4th. That's 4th to ninth, except 6th place. 6th place is right here, Jay Jefferson. So Mills and Brommer are still the top 2, and the only 2 to be under a 114.6. McIntyre ran his time around five minutes to go. So if anyone is going to get set up to run that lap time, they've got to do it soon because once you get past lap seven, tire wear is kapoosh. And it's hard to get through that one left-hand corner. You can see right now here, though, Brommer's running a really good line. He has to lift a little bit, but he doesn't get out of the draft. And the 91 ran a 114.322. And that was RJ Bishop in his group right here. And you can tell they're all strung out. And he never had to take his foot off the throttle. He's heading 191 into this corner right here. My goodness. <clears throat> and he ran that on his fourth lap. Wow. 
I was going to say he probably had a good chance to run it. Oh, actually, maybe, maybe he does. No, no, he's going to be leading the pack. That's going to take any chance of running a fast lap here. Except Hudson's going to get down in front of him with a push. That's going to pull Bishop's truck. I don't think we'll see another 3-2-2, but <clears throat> probably another pretty fast lap as uh, Brandon Duncan's going down pit road. See, that was a 4-3-9. Bishop ran there. Still pull worthy as the 42. Who's right behind this whole pack ran a 5-4-1. We've got a total of 11 trucks on their 115. 77. Diego Yepes is still only truck above 117. <clears throat> But right now, Bishop's looking pretty good on getting that pull. Just about to hit the five-minute mark. Be the dude ran a perfect lap. Two laps in a row, too. The 4.39, he ran the last lap. Still would have been good enough for the pole. It looks like some drivers in this group are pitting. And that would just be Ellison. Bishop spaced out once again. Nowhere near at the speed he was before, though. Is there anybody around the track setting up for a fast lap? There are a good amount of trucks on pit road. <clears throat> and that just kills that run there by McKella. Rich still by himself. Hasn't really had a chance to run a fast lap. There's a group right here. I would say out of any of them, Beckett's in a pretty good spot. But he just came out of pit road. He's still in third gear. He's going to hit fourth gear right about here. But he's going to end up lifting here, which is bad. And right there, he's going to make it three wide. And that, in third gear, that just kills all your speed. You can see there, too, as an outlap, it really, really didn't get anywhere. But three minutes left, and we've got a lot of people who've been coming down pit road. Anthony Lopez there, fifth on the board. Markle and Bishop still running on the track here in this group. All of these guys, actually, Hudson, too. So this is a worn tires pack right here. It's the 31 of Jade Jefferson jumps up to second with a 4.48 last time by. The 47 of Hamill, a 5.52. Looks like Brommer and Mills also improved on their best times. Six trucks on their 114.6. There's Ellison out from his pit stop. Two and a half minutes to go. You can see this entire group, except for Hartnett, ran their new fastest laps the last time by. Jefferson still sits at the back of this pack. He might be setting himself up for another hot lap here. He's got to play it right. There's a decent distance to the trucks in front of him. He's getting a very good head of steam here. And he's pitting. And that just went out the window because of that. I think he had a pretty good shot at a good lap time. Hartnett just hit a 1.56. Mills a 3-3-1, Brommer a 3-5-1. Hamill even hit a 5-2-2. If Jefferson had stayed out, I guarantee he would have had a faster lap than Hartnett. But Hartnett, my goodness, talk about a perfect lap time with just under two minutes left. Hartnett to the top of the board. 
I really don't think we'll see anybody else get close. I could be wrong, though. Ah, nah, these guys aren't going to do it. They're side by side. We're looking for people need to be entering this corner here at about 190. Jefferson coming out of pit road. Saw a little lag there. That has me worried. These guys are going three wide, so that's dead in the water. Uh, this pack's catching a bunch of slow trucks. Whoa, we had some people run 113s. Cole Hudson leading this pack along with RJ Bishop, the 15 of Anthony Lopez. They all hit 113s. They must have been spread out like they are right now. Even Marco with a 114-110. They were spread out. And they were catching this slower pack. And they're not going to get anything now. Is there actually wrecking? Austin Rex. Jake Rogers Rex. Unbelievable. As we're on standby. And that is what happens when one pack catches another pack and nobody has anywhere to go and they just keep going three wide, four wide. It just does not work out. But it looks like right now this man right here will be the one to get the pole. Him and two others ran 113s. And Bishop was behind Hudson, so I'm surprised he was not able to run a faster lap. Thirty seconds remain. But if the temperature had not gotten colder, these guys probably would not be running 113s. But I think even if you warm the track up nine degrees, Hudson would still end up with a better lap than McIntyre. I mean, that's 1.2 seconds. That's a very good precise lap time. And with the session complete, it's official. Hudson is your pole sitter, and Hudson locks in to the first NNSCRA Honeydew Donuts 250K. So I will see you guys back for the two heat races. I'm going to have to move someone from Group 1 to Group 2. And it's going to be... I'm going to move the 54 of Kukulon because he was last in the first session as the session went to qualifying. But we don't want that to happen. And so with that, I will see you guys for the heat races. Colt Hudson, your pole sitter, locked into the main for the NNSRA Honeydew Donuts 250K.